I'm scared. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. And I'm Liz. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you will certainly live amazing if you have the right rig. If you watched our previous video about whether we were going to sell our fifth wheel and get a Class A, then you know we've been thinking about that. We want to thank you so much for weighing in. We've learned a lot from you. So many people said, well, you better drive one. You better drive one. Rent one. Whatever. And it was just so wonderful. We love the A team. We love that Jill and Darren reached out and said, drive ours. The way this started was so cute because she had said, oh, we just got a Class A. And I jokingly said, well, we should swap. And then she said, well, if you're ever in the area, let us know. Yeah, and we were. So, How many of you with a Class A, a brand new one at that, would let us drive one? Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I would have done that for somebody that I didn't know. Well, we're very, very uh, touched that they offered. No. So what they have is a brand new 2021 Thor Venetian R40. They've only had it for three months. So it's a 40 foot long diesel pusher. Jill and Darren basically spent, you know, the whole day with us showing us the whole rig inside and out so we could learn the setup, how the slides work, and so that we could drive it. We took it out and drove it around their quaint little town and then we went up on the freeway. Okay. okay. All right. So, foot on the brake. You know, right there, that's the brake. All right. Okay, so. It's in neutral right now. See, can you see this? How it has a, a D and an N. And turn the wheel slightly and you'll... Yeah. There you go. Okay. So drive is forward. You just turn the center. Reverse is backwards. So when you're ready, you can put it in drive. Push down, push that in right there. Which, goes, which happens first? Uh, either one. I usually take the brake off first, but that works just as well. Now push that in. Push it in. Hear that noise? Yeah. Okay, that means you're good to go. So, so as soon drive. as you let off the brake, she's going to move. All right, cool. All right. Should I try making a turn? Uh, not yet. I just drive it straight a little bit. We'll go right. down to the, the corner and make a turn. All right. Oh, man, it floats. All right. It's up to you whenever you're ready. Okay. Am I going to... Everybody, I can, hang on. I can make... <laughs> I can, <laughs> can I make a right here? Well, that's a court. You can go in the court and flip around and go forward and backward sure. if you want to get used to it. I'd say go straight. Okay. Then we'll make a left as we go out of here. Uh, all right. So, front foot on the brake. Yep. Air brake off, put her in drive. There you go. And we're going. You can get gun it a little bit, see how she takes off. Whoa. <laughs> She's, she's not yeah. bad for a big, yeah. old, for a big girl. For, for 38,000 pounds, <laughs> that's not too bad. <laughs> Some of the things that you guys were saying in the comments about that last video was be careful. Some of the Class A's you can't see eight feet in front of you. Right, yeah. Yeah, and we actually talked to them about that before either of us got behind the driver's seat. And, and Darren said, no. He said, that there's, there's no eight-foot blind spot up there. I bet some of them have that blind spot. But this particular one, I mean, unless you flattened yourself against the front, you would be seen if you walked yeah. across the front. So the biggest thing to keep in mind, with a Class A, you're actually sitting in front of the axle slightly, right? If you drew an imaginary line through your hip, that would be about the point where you're going to start the turn. Right in the lane. You're okay. Yeah, you're not. That's go straight. You don't want to pull up to the curb like you do in a car. Yeah. And then as soon as your hip kind of goes goes past it, just start turning. It's like right it. now. Yeah, you're totally fine. This is a big wide turn, so we're good. Ooh, I'm staying in the lane. Sure. I'm sure the older rigs don't have this, but theirs has cameras. So you can see when you're driving down the road, you can see what's going along on the side of the rig in your blind yep. spot. Yeah, it has a neat feature. So when you turn on the left turn signal, it lights up the left camera. In the big display in the, in the, in the center stack, you're now seeing it, what's, what's next to you. People say that it's noisy in a Class A. Did you find that? Wind noise at freeway speeds. Okay, hang on, baby. I'm hanging. No. Okay, now it's floored. <laughs> I was about three quarters away. Let me know if the camera's bothering you. No, you're good. Look at that, 50. What was 
was that? Gravel on the wheels, maybe. Yeah, I see what you mean about the wind noise. It is. Because that's a flat yeah, windshield, yeah. and you definitely notice that that wind and I'm sure it's different for each class A. And even Darren, I was thinking that there's something, he's looking into where this wind noise is coming from because it, it does seem to be a little higher than normal, but uh, I, I have no comparison, so I don't know. Inside is unbelievably quiet. Oh, this is not bad at all. That doesn't feel bad. Right, there wasn't any pots and pans rattling or anything like that. And I think that's something that else that you get used to. Mm -hmm. But you also, I mean, I've had a, a couple class C's, you know, and you just kind of get used to padding everything. Yeah. But that was not, it did not feel like, you know, we were rattling at all down the road. It felt very quiet, uh, and, very nice ride. And no engine noise at all. Being a gearhead, you know, I, the engine noise is, or, is music to me. So, <laughs> so, uh, so I, I kind of hear it, but it's not, nothing like what we listen to when we're driving the, uh, the the truck so now i didn't get to do this but you got to back it how was that like with the backup camera it was fine you'd have to be asleep to run into something <laughs> well one point that i want to make is a big reason that we are considering going from a fifth wheel to a class a is that we feel our maneuvering we've had gotten ourselves into some tight situations it's been not so easy to maneuver it and one thing that we've noticed you know, now that we've been staying in campgrounds for over two years solid is we never see a class A struggle now you know to get into a campsite now it is campground entertainment when somebody comes up on a weekend yeah. with their trailer yeah. and they're trying to back in they come forward back in come forward i mean we have not seen that no not with A's not with A's no no I was impressed by how adjustable those big rigs are because you are basically driving a bus yes you are and the foot pedals adjust as well yeah. as the seat yeah. and the steering wheel yeah, and uh, it, yeah, it up and down and in and out and yeah, yeah. Darren took the time to fit us, and if you do go to test drive a Class A, that's something I'd recommend to do is to make sure that it fits right for you. Because I've heard from some petite women uh, from this video who said they didn't think they could drive one. I mean, I'm pretty small. I'm five foot six. I got the seat and steering wheel in the in a comfortable position. And I was fine. All right, how's it feel? It's it's great. Yeah, it's easy to drive. No no effort at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm worried about, you know, the, the turning and, and, and hitting curb, you know, scuffing a curb with it. But, yeah, it's, it's easy once you know the, the hip rule. Right. So do you think you could take it to a campground and put it in a site? I think so, yeah. I am leaning to stay in the fifth wheel because it is just so spacious inside and the, and the windows make it just so nice. Um, but it's encouraging to see that the newer Class A's have big kitchen sinks and more counter space. When we look at older ones, we find that the kitchen is just not usable the way we want to use a kitchen. For us, it's a balance between the comfort of moving and the comfort of living. And right now, the moving part is still is still kind of stressful for me as the main driver. Right, but the living is absolutely perfect there is no compromise yeah. yes yeah. and and i think that's if you're going to pick an rv or a camper or a trailer or whatever that's the biggest thing you balance do you want the nimbleness so easy to travel and back and be able to fit in any campsite or do you want to once you're parked have no compromise like we have a larger fridge than we would ever find in a camper van or oh, yeah. or a little travel yeah. trailer and we like that we like that we aren't on top of each other we were locked down for 76 days in this rig last year we never had cabin fever before then we both suffered from oh, yeah. cabin fever yeah i can't imagine that lockdown in in our previous rig yeah. which was five feet shorter yeah yeah that would have been that would have been very trying so we may revisit it again and it also that's the other thing it's not really a great time to be buying right now there's very few decent rigs out there for sale there's a lot of junk on the market but there's very few good ones on the, on the market and we're so glad that we got the opportunity to, to drive an a yeah thank you to darren and jill for letting us drive one and, and it was fun it was really a lot of fun and and it's still i mean when we bought this rig to often say it was a coin toss between a, the fifth wheel and the class a and obviously we chose the fifth wheel 
And you know, that's what's so good about RV life is that you can have so many different ways to do it. So let us know in the comments your favorite, whether it's a fifth wheel, class A, class C, truck camper, motorhome, whatever. Yeah, we'd like to hear what you guys have to say.